Stream and drive. <laughs> Hello. It's been a while since we've done this, but we're back in Scarlet Nexus. I know, kind of weird, kind of weird to me too. We go from Code Vein to Senua's Sacrifice, and after Senua's Sacrifice, especially after how just exhausting. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, I gotta remember the controls. I gotta remember the controls. One second, one second, one second, one second. I don't remember what some of the controls are, and that's gonna be a problem. Ah, oh, no, that, that, that doesn't do anything. Ow. Okay, this is gonna be awkward. This is gonna be awkward. I don't remember the. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Oh, that's right, those explode. I forgot those explode! Duplication! Ow! God, I hate that enemy. Like, whoever invented that, whoever came up with that enemy is an asshole. God, though, but like, seriously, I'm dead serious when I say, this game is like a comfort game for me. I'm not even gonna try and deny it! Get away from me. Oh my god. Thank God their explosions also hurt enemies, though. That would be incredibly annoying if it didn't. Oh, let's see what we got here. Rainy Rummy, Rainy Rummy, and Wither Sabat. Get out of the Wither Sabat's way. Do I have any all heals? I do not. This is a problem. <laughs> Send help for what, Dusk? What have you done this time? What can I do here? I got Kyoka... And Sheeden for that. Let's go duplication again. And it's Tonga truck time, motherfuckers! Bonk! <laughs> I throw you too. Didn't get him into the wall though. Now that would have been funny. Being force-fed cringe by who and what what kind and by who. This is important. Because I need to make sure whether or not it's actually cringe or you're just a little bitch. Because if it's, I mean, because if it's actually cringe, yeah, that's one thing. But if you're just weak, I'm going to sh I'm going to mock you for it, Dusk. Made cafe anime, which made cafe anime. This is again, this is important. This is important because if it's licorice recoil, then you're just weak. If you're complaining about licorice recoil, you are just weak, Dusk. Because licorice recoil is good. Oh, wow. Got rid of all of them. Let's see what we got to go through next. Oh, it's this way. Okay. But yeah, no, if it's Licorice Recoil that you're calling cringe, you are weak, Dusk. And if, if it's Blend Ass, if it's Blend Ass, I get it. Okay, good. It's not Recoil. Something something Animal Made Cafes. Oh, no. This sounds cursed. Find me the title because I want to see what this is now. I want to see what this is. If this is like a specific anime, I want to see what this is. So I could judge it for myself. Oh, hey, it's Yuito. Oh, I was able to rescue them thanks to your help. God, this dork. Yes. Babe? Okay, I'm still like, I'm still just amazed that they felt, I'm mean, not amazed, but you know, I still thought it was just wild that they, they actually went for that kind of plan to just, the, the entire extent of what they were doing here is utterly ridiculous. They wanted, they, they were basically trying to create t people that could control time so that they could rewrite the world in their own image because this world is flawed. How did nobody pick up on that? Seriously, if this is a doomsday cult. I don't care what they're offering you. They're obviously going to backstab you. So unless you have, unless you are, uh, actually no, not even, it, not even if you're certain that you're going to backstab them first and your backstab is going to be better, not even then. Do you work with the Doomsday Cult that's obviously going to backstab you? Because while you're planning however you're going to backstab them in return, or worse, you're not, they're probably figuring out a way to backstab you even better. It's just a lose-lose situation. I don't understand what they thought they could get by working with these guys. Uh, yes. And now I'm going to kill you, Yuito. <laughs> what do you hear you say? It? You have all the right in the world to help me. In fact, I don't blame you for it either. Yes, I think it's best to talk for now. Where did I talk about? Yeah, talk about like. 
Yeah, why do the mates... Uh, dusk, explain. Dusk, explain immediately because you just mentioned that the maids have guns and it's an animal maid cafe or something like that. Isn't really giving me much information to work off of here. Give me a title, damn it. That's, 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 that's what I, that's all I need. I just need a title, Dusk. Give me a title so I can see what the hell you're talking about because I'm bugging Kale. <laughs> Get Kale in here now. Get Kale in here now, Dusk. I know he's around and I know, and I know he comes in here. So go get him. Yeah. Drag him in here if you have to. Because I'm, we're going to figure out what this is. And Kale's not going to get to be all coy about it. And be like, hmm, maybe I'll let you know what it is. No, just tell me what the fuck it is, Kale. I don't like when people are trying to be cute with shit like this. Good. Let him under... Make sure he knows the consequences if he doesn't come. <laughs> <laughs> Something's different about you. Um... Uh, because apparently, oh my god, she's gonna ex actually explain. Oh, he'll see. He'll see, Dusk. He'll see very soon. Yes, it did, Yurito. We made a black hole and now we have a problem. Because that black hole is gonna consume everything. Hell, future you told me all of this, Yuito. And now, and hell, he's even the one that told me to kill you. So, me in the future, yes. He wants me, yes, yeah, Kale. I see you've arrived, Kale. Tell me that, tell me what this animal maid cafe shit that you've been showing Dusk is. And don't be coy about it. Just give me a fucking name. Or even better, link it if you've got it. I demand answers, and I am not patient. I think you understand. Akiba made sense. What is this? What is this? Probably want to kill browser audio for this just in case it's weird. Just in case it's some really fucky shit. Let's see. Okay, so this is new, whatever it is. Akiba... Oh, this this looks strange. Akiba made sense. What are you? It's good. Trust us. Who are you? Oh, Bardson. God, I hate that your name is that dark blue. It makes it hard to read. It's like Twitch. Can you please choose better colors? Damn, you're making it. Let's see. Psy Games. Oh no. Psy Games. <laughs> set in Akihabara set in Akihabara in 1999, a 17-year-old girl named Nagomi Wahira begins her new job working at a pig theme pig themed maid cafe, trying to follow her dream of being a cheerful and hardworking maid. However, Nagomi soon finds that the world of maid cafes in Akihabara is mo a lot more cutthroat than she anticipated at first. Oh, this could be good. This absolutely could be good. This, 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 this is interesting. This is like somebody crossed over Blend S with... I'm trying to think of what it is. Not Black Lagoon. Maybe, actually. A little bit of Black Lagoon. We got... The former Soviet maid. We've got. Let's see here. Veteran maid. A 35 year old woman with a stern professional demeanor at all times. Whether serving patrons at the cafe or gu gunning down. Uh, oh my god, you're right. It is made Yakuza Dusk. It absolutely. It's made Yakuza. Who the. <laughs> what, Kale? What's the question you got for me, hmm? Hmm? Care to explain? You've been granted a reprieve. This is great. <gasps> yes! I think I have! I think I have if it's the one I think it is. You're talking about Goku dolls, right? 
where the three, the, where the Yakuza members, <laughs> after failing, have to be, after failing their boss too many times, have to, yes, that one is good. Goku Dolls is amazing is what it is. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that's what it was, Kale. I was a little worried that you were going to mention something really cursed, and I was going to have to punish you for it. But, but you have not, you, you have not disappointed me this time. And for that, you get a reprieve for now. Don't even think about it, kid. Anyways, let's have a look at this real quickly. First episode description. For those of you who are not watching this or who might be interested in watching this, <laughs> let's see what the plot, let's see how this first episode goes. In 1985, an older maid is walking into a tea house in Akihabara where she is gunned down by a rival maid. 14 years later, Akihabara is covered by multiple different maid cafes as a girl named Nomo Nagomi Wahira be prepares to begin her new job working for the Oinky Doink Cafe, a pigsty themed maid cafe. Nagomi is quickly pressed into service along with the stern yet professional 35 year old Ranko Manen as new maids that same day. Despite their enthusiasm for the job, the lack of experience creates problems for the other maids. Suddenly, a hard boiled otaku shows up threatening the manager of the cafe for not paying her dues to his organization, Creature Land. Looking for a way out, the manager offers Nagomi to handle the Wuv Wuv Moonbeam issue, tasking her with hand-delivering a letter to the rival maid cafe. Before that, the manager gives some money for the ramen shop owner downstairs and allows Ranko to go with Nagomi. After eating some ramen, the two girls head over to Wuv Wuv Moonbeam and find out that the letter was actually a provocation to attack. Ronko shoots the head maid of Wuv Wuv Moonbeam from a, with a gun she got from the ramen chef, and then kills the rest of the what? <laughs> oh my god! They actually literally just go to the rival maid cafe! <laughs> that is amazing! They go to the rival maid cafe, deliver a letter, which turns out to be a threat, <laughs> Gun down! Oh, also Bardson, a carrot one-shotting a dragon. I think I've heard mention of this, but fill me in because c considering what I just read, I I think I've just had my entire memory go blank. <laughs> hey there, sir. I'd like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Oinky Doinky Gun. <laughs> Actually, no, no, no. That's the wrong voice. That's the wrong voice. I'm like this. Hey there, sir. I'd like to talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Oinky Donkey. Gun. <laughs> Farmer gets super strong by just farming. Oh, that sounds like the plot. That sounds like the plot of something that somebody else I know has been playing recently. Or at least it's evoking the same sort of mental imagery. Because I don't know if you know her, but if you know Ira, the sheep, the, the Welsh... The Welsh Sheep. She has been playing Mineral Town, which apparently is mostly like Stardew Valley. It's in that same sort of vein, but let me see what the hell this game is about. Because some of the things I've heard her mention in Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral, Mineral Town has been the most cursed shit. Are you fucking kidding me? Gun? <laughs> That's perfect! That is literal perfection! God damn, Kale! <laughs> they actually... <laughs> they got to... That also reminds me... I, this might actually be from Akiba Maid Said So, but it reminds me of another thing I saw recently, which was also... It was two maids running away from a bunch of other maids. Uh... Oh uh, God! What was it? Let me see. What the hell was this? It was Akiba Maid said so. <laughs> oh my God! I remember this scene now. It's the boy boy cute scene from Akiba Maid said so. <laughs> 
Oh, it's so good. Yup, that's the exact thing I was thinking of, Kale. I have seen this. I have seen Akiba Maid said so. I actually, I've seen this scene anyways. I have not seen the whole series, but now that I know what this is from, I am probably going to go and actually watch Akiba Maid said so just because the entire, the very concept of this scene just killed me. Literally, these two maids are like running away, and then one of them pulls out a gun and starts blasting. Literally, just well, then I, uh, the next thing you know, I started blasting. <laughs> I don't want to skip this cutscene. Oh my god! Thank you for reminding me of that, Dusk. Thank you for showing me this, Kale. I I, I knew. Oh my god, why would you do that to him, Kale? If you're going to show somebody something, give them context. I never thought you'd be complimenting me. Thanks. That makes me feel a little better. I'm proud I have the same power as you. That reminds me. How's your brain doing? Has it s oh my god, I can't. I, I, I don't have a good voice for Kasane. Why am I even trying? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, if you're talking, oh, if you're talking about the scene that Kale just posted, I can, I can kind of get it. I can kind of get throwing someone into the deep end with that scene, and it is, it is a great scene. All right, it's exchange intel, especially about Kyoka. Yeah, no, uh, Kyoka is. Um, well, well, for those of you who haven't been here before. Let me just actually do something that will describe Kyoka for you perfectly. Because if you this 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 pretty much describes Kyoka perfectly. Oh, I gotta go grab this. I gotta grab this. It's gonna take a second. Where is it? I need the one that actually has the whole thing. Where it's Where are you? Specific thing I'm looking for. Yeah, no gun. This one. Little... No, it's not that one. Where is it? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Th this will tell you everything you need to know about Kyoka. This, this, this is Kyoka in a nutshell. That's not even the exact one I was looking for. But she literally, like, she literally leads us toward this doomsday cult. And then it turns out this whole time that she had been a brainwashed sleeper agent for this doomsday cult. And it took us beating the brainwashing out of her head for that, for her to get back on her side. She tried, so she tried. She she ambushed us and drugged us so that the doomsday cult could you you know try and to try and brainwash us in turn to use for their plot to like I said rewrite the world in their image by the power of the red strings. But unfortunately for them, <laughs> the plan did not work. Fortunately for us, and now and then like I said, we had to beat the brainwashing out of Kyoka. And now we're finally meeting up with Kyuito again. And this time, funnily enough, we're not trying to kill him, despite the explicit instructions from his future self that we were supposed to kill him. The thing about this entire thing is Bard is the one who watched the show at 4 a.m. and then subsequently came to me with us. Unfortunately, they didn't expect it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right, Dusk? Didn't expect, they would never expect that. Yes, I'm a clone made in Taketsu. My genes come from the. Ah! That's. Okay, that's what it was. I remember, like, because it's not just that they brainwash her. It's not just that they brainwash her to be a, a sleeper agent. They brainwash her. First of all, so she is a clone of the founder of the Doomsday Cult, and then they brainwash her to have the memories of the aforementioned founder of the Doomsday Cult. That is literally perfect. Oh my god. What are they going to throw at us next? That's the that's the real question. It's like they they've thrown this at me now. 
The city is filled with yes, children of Tagetsu. Again, this term, design children. I know I've heard it somewhere before. I wonder where, Kasane. Oh, God, Kale. Now I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. What do you mean by what do you mean by your mess? Your, your brain is a bit too cultured for your messages to be legal in this chat, Bard. Are you trying? Are you typing slurs? Are you typing slurs? <laughs> if it was auto mod dusk, I think I would be seeing it here. I think I would be seeing auto mod throwing a fit about me trying and telling me whether or not I wanted to approve or deny things. So I don't know what the hell Bardson is trying to post. The non-consensual kind of mind break. Oh, you think, oh, you think you're going to affect us with whatever you want to post, don't you Bardson? Well, don't you worry. I think I've seen worse than whatever you might post. So go ahead, post it. Are you, or are you afraid? Are you a coward? Is that what it is? <laughs> well, then go ahead and post it, Bardson. That's what I just said, isn't it? Dusk. Dusk, I'm going to make your, I'm going to make your eyeballs into jewelry, and then put them on Kale's ears, so that you can, so that you can. So that he can wear a reminder of you wherever he goes. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. That was, I don't know. That was not a great threat. That was not a great threat. I'm sorry for that. Do you want me to refund that dusk? <laughs> I like, I kind of knew where I was going with that. And then I didn't know where I was going with that. And it didn't work. Uh, uh. Oh, God. So let's pull this up. Oh, it's over here. Okay, we need to go here, here. Manage. And then we go down. Where are you? Where are you? That is the real question now. It's not as bad as stripping his insides using a shovel's blunt side and then making it macabre art. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Who says I won't do that to you, Dusk? And again, I would need both you. I'm not just. I would need you, Kale, and probably Bardson, to to get enough blood to paint my room red. But I, but but I'll think about it. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> Anyways, eh, whatever. I can't find the thing to do it. I'll poke around with that later. Skip. No, I don't want to skip this damn cutscene. But I regained a memory of mother. Yes, she said. That's why Kyoka. Yes, that is why Dr. Kyo. Luca, are you. Luca, you're. You, Luca. Did it take you. Did it really take you this long to figure out what the. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> okay, Tetsu. You mean like this? <laughs> <laughs> is that the one you mean? Because I'm pretty sure, because well, I don't know if there's a different Doom theme now. Maybe Eternal changed something. I mean, it changed a lot of other things after all. This is why I'm not a big fan of Eternal. Actually, no, there's a few reasons why I don't like Doom Eternal. I've gone on this rant before, so I'll keep it short and sweet this time. But basically, I don't like Doom Eternal because Doom Eternal keeps dragging you out of the gameplay loop. So anyway, my brain auto-filled she drugged us with a non-consensual kind of mind break. You know, when someone is defenseless. Yeah, Han Bardson. Uh, okay. I hate to ask this. I hate to ask this, but if she was one of the Tagetsu followers... Yes, she was a spy. She was absolutely a spy. Oh, no. Is it really doing... <laughs> It really will. Is it really not letting you type the word rape? Damn. Automod, Automod's not letting me. Automod's not telling me anything about this. It really must insist that this word is. Yes. Yes. That is the word you want. Yes. There we go. 
There we go. You horny son of a bitch. Yes, Kyoko was a spy. She's not working for them anymore. We beat the brainwashing out of her. And if she tries anything again, I'll kill her myself. Uh, good. Now we got that out of the way. Let's see. Damn, you are a dumb motherfucker, Yuito. You are one dumb motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that's kind of an embarrassing way to put it. Honestly, I don't know much about Kyoka, so I can't really make this decision myself. Yeah, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Most of the time... Anyways, we're having a full-on mathematical calculation, allowing for the creations of, and I quote, a sword made from the blood of your enemies. This is a terrible idea, Kale. Just... Make the sword out of normal ass iron. It's gonna be a shit sword if you don't. Like, damn, sure. Uh, unless you've got like some weird magic bullshit going on, it's gonna be a shit sword. Yeah, no, blood iron won't be any better. Exactly, Lynx. <laughs> and you're going to need a lot of it. You're going to need an un godly quantity of blood if you want to make a sword out of the iron from somebody's blood <laughs> like i don't even want to think about the amount of blood you're gonna need it's obscene yes kale i get it blood sword this is a stupid about three thousand three hundred fourteen thousand two hundred oh my god yeah the impurities are going to be Nightmare. The process of extracting the iron from the blood is going to be horrible. You're going to waste everyone's time. Everyone's going to hate you by the end of this. And then, on top of it all, hit us with a number, Kale. Hit us with that number. I want to see how stupid this is. I want to see how incredibly stupid this is. Well, we already know it's incredibly stupid. But let's just see how. $572,000. Yeah. Yeah, this is a terrible idea. This is an absolutely terrible idea. And if you ever mention it again, I'm going to turn your spine into a fucking umbrella. Don't ask how, but it's going to work. Lynx, they're assuming that you're not paying them for the blood. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't know how the, I don't know how they're going to manage the logistics of this either. I'm guessing they're just calculating that. But then, five hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. I'm guessing is just the raw cost of the blood based off of some something. I don't fucking know. Uh, this is this is this is an incredibly dumb idea and I'm going to hurt Kale if he ever mentions it again because this is an incredibly dumb idea. Raw blood cost 1 equals 1 si Ah. Ah. So so basically what you're saying 7 milliliters is a dollar eighty two five hundred and seventy two thousand dollars divided by I'm actually gonna do some math here because you're gonna you have you have me interested in seeing just how stupid this is now because you've told me a lot of it already so five hundred seventy two thousand over one one point eight two is about three hundred fourteen thousand two hundred eighty five times seven over a thousand you would need 2200 liters of blood for this kale kale i'm going to fucking stab you i i i, I i'm not even i'm not even going to give you any sort of fancy elaborate threats for this i'm just going to stab you I'm going to stab you with a sword that isn't with a, with a sword that isn't stupid. I'm going to just grab a normal ass sword made from normal ass iron and I'm going to stab you with it. No, 
No, I will not, Kale. If anything, I'm going to turn you into ashes. I'm just going to burn you. I'm going to... Well, aren't you fancy, Bardson? <laughs> aren't you the fancy one reincarnated into a sword? You think you must be real special. <laughs> although, although, I will say real quickly, let's rewind real quickly here. Let's rewind and assume that we're not talking about making the sword out of iron extracted from blood. Let's just say that it is literally blood magic bullshit. This could be an interesting concept, you know? If, like, again, like I said, th th via magic bullshit, you have crystallized the blood into, like, that would actually be kind of cool. But because you're trying to go through the whole process of extracting the iron. Yeah, no, it is absolutely a chuny weapon, Dusk. Kale is just overcomplicating it and making it stupid as a result. Remember, even with chuny shit, even with chuny shit oh my god 16,188 yeah yeah no this is a terrible idea kale this is a terrible 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 idea you you took something that could that you took something okay let me put the way even with chuny bullshit apply the logic of keep it simple stupid don't go around overcomplicating shit or else you're just going to sound like one of those awful isekai light novel authors who doesn't even know how to put a damn plot together and whose and who's self-insert protagonist isn't even vaguely interesting. God, at least be Chuni right. Fuck's sake. I'm going to have to like sit you down and teach you how to do this shit right, aren't I? Good lord. Ugh. Anyways, let's see what we got here. I do know Kasane. I wanted to talk to her beside what to do, and I thought it was best to trust her. Well, yeah, Kale. Yes, it's acidic. Of course it is. It's an acidic liquid. And I trust the people she does. Nice. Thanks for that, Yuito. I mean, I'm a little surprised considering that we've been trying to kill you this whole time, and now you just suddenly trust us because, um... Well, actually, no, you, you do actually have a... He does actually have a decent reason to trust us. Um, because we did just save him from the brainwashing machine. Considering that we did just save him from the brainwashing machine, Dusk, he's not quite as dumb as I'm making him out to be. He at least, like I said, he actually does have a somewhat decent reason to trust us. Because we could have taken that opportunity to just kill him and be done with it. But we didn't, so hey, here we are now. You know very well the kind of, this is the kind of person Yuito is. Oh god, I know the ones you're talking about! I know the ones you're talking about! <laughs> I love these things! I love these things! I know the exact things you're talking about! They're they're fucking great! The snails who's um Yeah, the scaly foot gastropods, which are which uh, their their shells are made of pure iron and they look so cool! They look so ridiculous. I love it. Let me just let me just pull an image up so people here can see what I'm talking about. Because these things look amazing. So we go here, we go there, we go there. And let me show you these snails that Tetsu is talking about. These things are... Actually, no, no, no. That's not even them, Tetsu. That's not even them. Those are... Yeah, that one is. That one definitely is. But I've got like I've got another image of these things as well. These things are amazing. So this is the snail that Tetsu is talking about. These you see how like they've got this skirt on them. The skirt is actually uh, the skirt made of scales. Each of those scales is actually made of iron, <laughs> and they're amazing. Yeah, and the skirt also closes. So when they curl up to like get curl up back in their shell. The, sh the, the access to their shell is literally blocked by a bunch of iron, 
whatever wants to try and get to these snails has to deal with an iron shell and a bunch of these little iron scales. It's not pure iron, mind you. It's like iron sulfide, which means it's not going to quite be as good as an actual proper iron alloy in terms of material toughness. But I'm guessing it's the iron sulfide because one, that's what the materials they have available are. And two, it has better, it has good thermal properties. Oh no, what is this? What is this, Bardson? I, okay, I'm gonna show y'all this because Bardson sent sent me this. So Bardson sent me this just right now. This looks evil. Let's see what it is, shall we? Snails guy. Snails disapproval. Should have snurched too sooner. If the snivens ever did speak. She's the last true snout piece. Every snund is getting more bleak. A fresh snow is in each week. We were born sick. You heard them say it. My church is no absolute to worship in the snail room. The only snaven I'll be sent to is when I'm alone with you. Oh God, that is tripping me up so bad. <laughs> That is tripping me up incredibly bad. God damn. Okay, you know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do? We're just going to scroll ahead. And actually, see, just... Take me to snatch. I worship like a dog at the sound of your light. I'll tell you my sin so you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death. The good God, let me give you my life. Take me to church, I worship like a dog at the shine of your light. I'll tell you my sins so you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death, a good guy, let me give you my life. Okay. <laughs> oh no, shut up. Shut up, Kale. <laughs> All of you, shut up. You gave me a cursed version. I had to at least make it a bit less cursed than it originally is. And now, and now, just because of that, just because y'all have got me in the mood for this now, I'm going to see if I can find an instrumental version of another song I'm very fond of. Because there's this there's this band that I, I love. There's this band I absolutely love called Zeal and Ardor. You might have heard of them, you might not have heard of them, but if you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, no. Tetsu, no. No, that is evil. That is evil. Yes, no. You've literally got me in the singing mood now. You've got me in the singing mood now. This is your fault. I just want you to know that. Let's see if we can find the lyrics for this first. Make sure the song I think it is. Yes, it is! Yes, it is! I love this track. I love this track. So, like I said before, are y'all familiar? Are any of y'all familiar with Zeal and Ardor? Because I fucking love Zeal and Ardor. They're one of my favorite bands ever. So, you know, we're just gonna like we'll come back to Scarlet Nexus in a moment. But first, like I said, we're just gonna do this first. You know, we're gonna take a break, take a, a, a little tangent to do something else to like actually just get this out of my system because it's going to bother me until I do. These stairs don't have anywhere to lead you. Who cares if you're lost like the others? Don't let anybody step into the circle now. Don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. All oh, these days gonna pass like a grass fire. Don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. One of these days I'm ahead for the last mile. Don't let anybody tell you that you're... Mm, these are the eyes that saw them die. These are the hands that dug their graves. So don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. So don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. 
You gotta let go, let go, let. You gotta let go, let go, child. You gotta let go, let go, let. You gotta let go, let go. Who dares coming into where I'm standing? The root stairs just as empty as you are. Although you ain't the body that ain't gonna help your child. So don't let anybody tell you that you're saved. All these days gonna pass like a grass fire. Don't let anybody tell you that you're saved. One of these days I'm ahead for the last mile. Don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. Mm -hmm. These are the eyes that saw them die. These are the hands that dug their graves. So don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. So don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. You gotta let go, let go, let. You gotta let go, let go, child. You gotta let go, let go, let. You don't let anybody tell you that you're safe. Look at your home for the left. Brother, that you're gonna die. Let them know you're gonna be a while. Tell your family you ain't coming back. Go home for the last time. Tell your brother that you're gonna die. And let them know you're gonna be a while. You gotta let go, let go, let. You gotta let go, let go, child. You gotta let go, let go, let. You gotta let go, let go. God, I said before, like, hold on, let me just turn the reverb off because I actually had that. I turned that off for that second half of that. Let me turn that off real quickly because. <laughs> oh man, I was telling you before, like I said. Zeal and Ardor is just, oh my god, they, they, they have an effect on me, and they have, they are some of my favorite things. Hey there, Slep, thank you for that. Ooh. Tetsu had to spot thrills. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that feels good. Also, I'm not going to do the whole song, but there's another song by zeal and ardor that i adore i can't find an instrumental version of it like right off the bat but it's called oh, what the hell is it called i have to look now it's from it's from their album stranger fruit which is an amazing album by the way oh thanks for the follow bardson now that that's that's a fucking side of confidence that you got in me right there what's the name of this track god it's not stranger fruit is it built on ashes? Hold on. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. So built on ashes has some one of my favorite. Has like my favorite. Some of my favorite vocals. It's like like a strange fruit. I don't, it's not built on ashes. That's not built on ashes. Is that? It's not stranger fruit because stranger fruit sounds different. It's not don't you dare. Don't you dare is amazing by the way. Just listen to this album if you ever get the chance to. Listen to. Oh, it is built on ashes. But yeah, no. The, the vocals on Built on Asses are amazing. Like a strange fruit is out of season. Ooh, you are bound to die alone. You will swing free in the breeze then. Ooh, you are bound to die alone. Just, there's something about the way that goes. The way that, that that just comes in. That is just so good for just getting your voice worked up. It's just a good track for stretching out your, you know, like, stretching your vocal muscles out. It's so nice. No, I don't want to skip this. Yeah, I just remember how stupid he is. <laughs> yes, it does, Hanabi. It, it, means ex it means exactly that. Not only is she one of those design children, she is the children of one of those design children. 
So Kasane is... Kasane's childhood had it particularly rough. Hey there, Calamity of Puck. I don't know if Scarlet Nexus is this musical. It does have a banger of a theme, though. It does have a banger of a theme by the oral cigarettes called Dream and Drive. I don't know the entire song, but the chorus is the, the chorus would be enough to get you ready for what it's like. It's like, I want to tell me. Yeah, no, Oral Cigarettes did the theme for Scarlet Nexus, and it's so good. It's so good. Like, it is an absolute banger of a theme, and I love it. I love the theme they did for it. However, I have a slight problem. The problem being that for some reason, I always get Dream and Drive mixed up. Is it me, Kale? Is it me? Do you love me? <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Then what is it, Kale? What is it, hmm? What is the other thing you love, then? Whoa! So you're a narcissist, is that it, Kale? Is that it? You're a narcissist? Pathetic. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? <laughs> That's right. Know your place, trash. Mm. What was I saying though? Oh yes, I all I have a problem that I specifically the problem is that I have a tendency to get Dream and Drive mixed up with another opening that's from something completely unrelated. I don't know what it is about it, but to me, for some reason, the two of them sound incredibly similar. Those being, so Dream and Drive sounds to me for some reason a lot like Headhunt by Okamoto's. Which was one of, which I think was the third opening for Durarara. Actually, no, is it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not Headhunt that I get things mixed up with. It's the other opening for Durarara. It's the second opening, not Headhunt. Headhunt is good, but it's not the one that I get mixed up with Dream and Drive. The one I get mixed up with Dream and Drive is Complication by Rookies as Punk. You know. Yeah, that one. For some reason, I always get that one mixed up with Dream and Drive by the Oral Cigarettes. I don't know what it is about it, but I do. And it's 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 weird. I, I, I cannot explain it beyond that. Beyond the fact that for some reason, I always get those two mixed up. Ah, uh, let's see what we got here. Some of the most pathetic. Huh? <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? Uh, to get to we saw the design children with the same face as Kasane's. Design children. Uh, uh, so are you telling me there's like a bunch of Kasanes running around? Is, is that what you're, you're saying? How many, how many Kasanes are running around? And are they going to become a problem? Because if they're going to become a problem, that might be something we need to know about. I remember a little when I was a child. I but what I recall, I was told I was one of the design children. It only just came back to me, so it doesn't feel real. That's why I said it like that. Yeah, that that is. I like the idea of just one day lurking in chat for the entire stream and only saying hi at the end. Kale, I know you don't have the patience to do that, so don't even try threatening it. Yeah, no, I mean, that, that definitely seems like it, whatever happened here at Tagetsu was not a good time for Kasane. Considering that among the other things we saw, we saw her mother get murdered. So this is probably why these memories have been repressed this whole time. Dusk, a swarm of ants is hardly pathetic. Do you understand how much damage a swarm of ants can do? That is not pathetic. That is not even remotely pathetic. 
Good lord. <laughs> a swarm of ants will fuck you up. This is true, Kale. This is true. You do have to put up with dusk. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how I do it. Sometimes I, I really wonder how I do it. <laughs> Ooh. But, I mean, he's still here, so obviously I'm doing something right. You don't know anything about humans coming from the moon. I'm hoping you tell... Oh, God. Are we going to go to the moon? Is this going to be like a trigger anime where at the end of it we're in space? I swear. If that's what this ends up being, I'm going to... I'm going to re... I'm going to refund this, even though I didn't pay for it. I mean, he's here because I'm here, and I'm here because I like to stalk my boyfriend. God, God damn it, you two. Just... Just fuck already. Just fuck already, you two. Uh, in Invisidaddy? Who are you talking about, Slep? Who is Invisidaddy? Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. Oh, him! I've gone on a couple with him. I know who you're talking about, Slep. I know exactly who you're talking about. He's the fucking dork and I love it. Like, that's the big thing. I was like, that's the big thing about the characters of this, a lot of the characters of this game. It's just, as soon as you actually get to know them, you realize how much of a dork half of them are. And it's so fucking, it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's like, him, Arashi, Arashi is like lazy dork. Invisible Man is like, yeah, no, we have not yet beaten this partner. I, I it's a long fucking game. This, but like this and Code Vein are both going to be games that are going to be able to just run. Th I'm going to get a lot of out of these two games, especially this one, because alongside this plot, this route, there is a whole second route where we play as Yuito. And that's going to get me God knows how much content. <laughs> Well, don't you feel special, Slep? Don't you feel fucking special? <laughs> Three days on the hardest difficulty. God. Oh! Oh, that's that's nice to know. I mean, if I was going to have to start over from scratch, that was going to kind of suck. But being able to New Game Plus, it, that's st it's still going to be Lord knows how much content. Anyways, who should I talk to first? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Actually, what's in the box? Let's go on another derail here real quickly because this reminds me of something I saw the other day. Where is it? Where is it? Can it just come up? No, it cannot. God, where is it? God, I know I can find this because I saw it the other day. And it was fucking great. Can I get this to come up, please? Ah, there it is. I knew I'd find it eventually. If you know what that audio is from, you'll know how, you'll understand how what's in the box triggered this derail real quick. Derail. But <laughs> if, let's see how many of you remember these two words. No Russian. Oh god, I, I didn't have the audio this whole time. <laughs> Y'all watch that without the audio. That's terrible. I'm sorry about that. Uh, here we go. Sorry. Sorry. I just like seriously, is it wrong though? Is it wrong? Is the person who made this wrong? If you are old enough to remember no Russian, is this wrong? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, exactly, partner. If they didn't want me to get excited, they shouldn't have told me I was a CIA agent, should they? Oh, so who should I talk to first? That is the next question. 
You know who I'm going to talk to? I know exactly who I'm going to talk to first. Because she is adorable. It was after the first colonists from the moon appeared arrived on Earth. That's that the extinction belt suddenly appeared. I love her voice. I love her. She's so cute and I love her so much. She's adorable. She's my precious little cinnamon roll. Yes, if they, did, if they wanted me to feel bad, they shouldn't have given me full auto. Exactly, Dust. Exactly. Because of its appearance, they were no longer able to contact the government on the moon. So I guess... Yes, apparently there are people on the moon. And how much you want to bet, the brain-eating space monsters we've been fighting this whole time are actually the moon people. How much you want to bet they are? I thought I should let you know, because you care about me so much to the point of checking up on me. God damn it, Kale. God damn it. I, 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 I'm not even going to threaten you with this. I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, I know. He absolutely should go on to bed. The people who colonized the moon began a major cleanup effort to save the polluted Earth and make it habitable again. They spent nearly a thousand... How bad did they fuck up the Earth that it took a thousand years to fix it? Damn! And... Ah... Uh... Uh, I, 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 excuse me, how do you make things... At this point, the moon plot point is... <laughs> Shut up, Bartson. Shut up. They spent nearly a thousand years on the project. Uh, okay. So apparently, the Earth was rendered uninhabitable. People from the moon... The first colonists from the moon were led by Yakumo Sumeragi. What they established on Earth be later became known as New Himika. Oh my god. I need. It's funny you mention G Witch, partner. I watched the first episode of that. I have not watched any of it since. I need to watch the rest of G Witch at some point because I've been seeing so many of like the, the posts, some of the other posts people were making around it. And first of all, those two are adorable. Those two are absolutely adorable. Second of all, Yuri Gundam, let's go! I mean, the Fujos had Gundam Wing, so I'll count this one as a win for uh, for me. <laughs> oh yeah, no, G Witch Zero as well. The, the, the prologue that they made to G Witch that was some really fucking crazy shit. We keep sending them to the moon. No one will expect to be sent to the moon because they'll be expecting to be sent somewhere else for once. They'll keep sending them to the moon. Exactly, Kale. Exactly. It's hard to believe, I know. Okay, we already talked to her. Let's talk to Yui Chan then, I guess. Apparently, human beings colonized the moon over 3,000 years ago because the Earth's environment wasn't livable anymore. It's not so long ago, it feels like a fairy tale. Damn! So, 5,000 years ago. This takes place in the year, at least the year 5,000. God damn. So some of this ruins and such might be from now. That's kind of creepy to think about, actually. That's really, really creepy to think about. It may be hard to believe, but apparently our ancestors moved here from the moon 2,000 years ago. Yeah, that's kind of what I got from everybody else here. Like I said, apparently 3,000 years before this game takes place, everybody had to leave and go to the moon because the Earth was... This is new. <laughs> this is this is entirely new. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying to process this, so... Let's just let's just run down through that again. Three thousand years before the events of Scarlet Nexus. Three thousand years before the events of Scarlet Nexus, the Earth was so uninhabitable that everyone had to leave and go live on the moon. And then over the course of the next thousand years. They went through the process of restoring the environment to a habitable state and then came back. <laughs> this is like, oh my God. It's not the same, but the level of what the fuck that's going on here reminds me of an anime I watched a while back. 
And then another and that's thing I discovered via one of my favorite albums that I've ever heard. You've probably heard me mention it before, but if you haven't, let me just go and get the album. Let me go. Let me just mention the album real quickly. So the album is "Ugly Death, No Redemption, Angel Curse, I Love You" by Ada Rook, one half of the duo Black Dresses. And so I was listening to this album, and I noticed there were anime quotes. There were what sounded like dubbed anime quotes in it. So I went around looking to try and find what it was. It turns out. There was an anime, there's an OVA from 2007 called Ice. And Ice is absurd. <laughs> That's the only way I can put it. Ice is absolutely absurd. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it beyond that. It's so ridiculous. Because the entire plot of Ice is that some event... What were you going to say, Kale? What were you going to say? Hmm? What were you going to say when I was trying to think of the title? Stream Elements. Cat Planet Cuties. Oh, God. No. Kale, just. No. Bad. Sit down. I'm going to go get the spray bottle. I'm going to get the spray bottle. By the way, fun fact, Stream Elements said be gone death for me. Yeah, that doesn't seem right at all, Bardson. That doesn't seem right at all. <laughs> I'm a little worried how that happened. Is Stream Elements haunted? Is Stream Elements haunted? Oh, thanks for that, Dusk. Oh, I needed that. Thank you. And one, two, three... And one, two, three. And I'm going to hit you, Bardson. You made me think something was actually wrong with stream elements. No, that's not what that means. That's not what that means in this case. Tot, does tot, it's not tot, it's tot. Like a child. I'm basically saying that if you're a minor, you shouldn't be here. Or at the very least, if you are, don't mention But anyways, I'm looking for something real quickly. It's going to just take a moment because I want to show you how batshit the plot of ice. I want to just explain to you how batshit the plot of ice is. It is, and this is before we even get into the actual plot of the series. Just the backstory is, is insane. Because in a nutshell, what happens in ICE is that when the space station Mir fell to fell out of orbit, something on board the something on board spread into the atmosphere and killed every single man, boy, and everything in between on Earth, leaving nothing but an ever diminishing population of women. I'm not joking. That is the setup. That is the actual setup of ice. Like, here's the space station mirror coming down from the Earth. And here's the shot of, like, whatever's causing it. You know, bio caution, biohazard, mirror, chemical bay. And the whole thing just, like, spreads across the Earth and leads to this apocalyptic event. Now, unfortunately, ice is a bit crap. <laughs> and... Ice gets, uh, but, but ice gets even weirder because not only is that the setup for ice, but the entire reason ice was produced to begin with makes it even more absurd because ice was produced specifically as a promotional vehicle for a branch group of AKB 48, you know, the somewhat well-known idol group that you even if you don't like follow them or anything you've at least heard the name you have at least heard the name akb48 even if you know nothing else about them oh my god what is this one shot a dragon by throwing a carrot what is this from 
what is this from? I've never watched it, but it's like, oh no, all but five guys in the world are dead and you have to have sex. Oh my God, that's, partner, partner, that's almost as bad as Conception. If anyone here remembers Conception, Conception was the peak of hot fucking garbage isekai. And is, and is, an is a great example of why isekai is a stain on the medium. Isekai is a stain on the medium. So Conception is literally about a guy who gets, is you know, gets isekai into a world where he is the, I believe I want to say he's the only man left, but I want to check real quickly because this anime was, the, the, the anime, the light novel, everything was based off of, everything about this is trash. So it's originally, No, this is not what I'm talking about. Is this what I'm talking about? Oh my god, this is the thing I was thinking of. It's originally an RPG. Uh... The player's goal is to charm girls from National Star God Academy raise their affection for Itsuki, then produce and take the star children to explore dungeons and battle impurities. However, it is not an eroge, as the star children are produced by pouring energy from Itsuki and one of the 12 star maidens into a particular device. The child's class and statistics are determined by which character parents the child. For example, certain combinations could result in creating a warrior or a child who, exp who specializes in magic. To produce more plentiful and powerful star children, Itsuki must increase his intimacy with the 12 maidens. The other aspects of the gameplay is typical to dating simulation. What is this trash? What is this absolute trash? Good God. I, I, it was bad enough when I knew it was I knew about the anime because the anime was literally, it was so because the entire point of this game is that it is it is basically an eroge that's trying as hard as possible not to be an eroge. <sighs> this is a stain. This is a stain on my memory that I'm going to need a lot of at work to remove. Sarasa dissect the health frame. Management of novice alchemist. Oh god, this sounds like it must be true. This also sounds I, I don't know anything about management of novice alchemist, but something about that title makes me think it's sketchy. And not the fun kind of sketchy where it's like cursed or like evil or anything like that. It just sounds like crappy generic isekai. It might not be, but that title makes it sound like it is. Ugh. But anyways, where were we? <laughs> What do you mean? It's only midnight. What well, are all of it after looking through Tagetsu's archives? Well, I honestly don't know if we should really believe all of it. If you were Tagetsu's side, Tokyo, you, you would know if this is true or not. Yes. That's indeed what we were taught. But that, but that was also part of the conspiracy, then. Oh no. More layers. Here we go. It's all for Kagero. Damn! Kagero out here about to, like, drop some knowledge on us. Okay. He knows everything, don't he? I can't stand it when you look at me like that. There's a lot I want to ask you, but for now, tell us about history as Tagetsu sees it. Do all Tagetsu believers know this? Right, about that. The faith. That's all a lie. Just a way to get Tagetsu independent. Oh, boy. So... Besides, the place is mostly made up of design children. How does it feel to know that one third of your viewers are dying to watch you? Impressed. Now go the fuck to sleep. Say, I, oh god, I missed that part! Me? No, no, I said mostly, didn't I? I'm a colonist from the- Oh. Yeah! So apparently... Kagero is 2,000 years old. 
Well, apparently, Kagura is over 2,000 years old. Lovely. <laughs> he was kept in cold sleep from the moon. They wake up, up in turns to check on the state of the Earth, and then we're supposed to contact the moon. But, uh, then how do you contact the moon? Yo, it's Budget Aizen. Nice. <laughs> But at least it seems like he's on our side this time, Kale. So there is at least that. Look, I don't expect you to believe me right away or anything, but it's the truth. People of New Himiko wanted to leave, live on Earth. So those that wanted to return to the moon made Togetsu. Togetsu doesn't care about New Himiko or Seiran. They just want to go back to the moon. Okay. They're an egotistical lot that wants to return to the moon instead of living on this crappy, other film planet. But as long as the extinction belt is there, they can't go back. Not only that, there's news that others are attacking the moon, too. So they got to thinking, what can they do to save their homeland and escape Earth? Apparently, they need to make it so the colonization never even happened in the first place. Uh, ah! 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 <laughs> Excuse me, what? Eh? Eh? So basically, they want to go back in time to keep people to pre they want to go back three three thousand years, prevent the colonization of the moon because they want to go back to the moon. Uh, no, 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 no. They don't want to prevent the moon colonization. They want to prevent the trip to Earth from the moon. Togetsu is very close to Totsugeki, though. God damn it, Kale. <laughs> God damn it. You're absolutely right. It absolutely is close to Totsugeki. Uh, unless... To be precise, the plan is to only take the moon and Earth back in time with a few. So basically, they're just gonna like pull the moon and Earth out from everyone's feet, and then they all and then we all die. Lovely. I love this plan to get to. I'm going to kill every single one of you. I'm going to kill every single one of you, and I'm going to enjoy it the entire time because that is the most batshit plan I've ever heard of, and I despise you for it. Sci-fi tale of the bamboo cutter. Okay, I don't remember Tale of the Bamboo Cutter, so I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to have to look that up because that sounds like some shit. That sounds like some absolute shit. And watch it turn out I actually have heard of it. Oh my god, it, it probably is. Now that I actually know what Tale of the Bamboo Cutter is. Now that I actually know what Tale of the Bamboo Cutter is. Holy shit, you might be right. You might be right, partner. I, I, I'm not familiar. I'm not used to hearing it called Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. I'm used to hearing it. Yes, I have watched Ed Runner's Kale. I absolutely have watched Edge Runners. I liked Edge Runners a lot. And one thing I will say is I f Where is this going? Where do you think this is going, Dusk? Because I can already kind of tell where this is going based on what Partner just said about Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. Oh no, 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 no. You're not talking about that. You're talking about Oh no. Kale, I'm going to rip you into tiny pieces and scatter them across the earth. And every single one of them will be hooked up to an electrical current to make sure that even in all of the little pieces, you'll still feel pain. God! Taking only a... Assuming it is Sugumi? Yeah, no, they're gonna kill us all. They're gonna kill us all. They're gonna kill us all and it's gonna be bullshit. I plan to leave records of this timeline's history in the areas that were not taken back in time. The future generations won't attempt to colonize Earth again. You and me both, Hanabi. You and me both. The entire point. That is the name I'm used to hearing it as, partner. Tale of Princess Kaguya. As soon as I looked up Tale of Bamboo Cutter and I saw the name Princess Kaguya, I knew what you were talking about. But yeah, no, I'm betting this is going to be Tale of the Bamboo Cutter now that you mention it. Good God. <laughs> like, who could have seen this coming?
God. Whether you want to believe it or not, Takeshi actually managed to create the red strings to carry out their plan. Kasane is a result of that. Although it's pretty strange how Yuito has a similar power. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering about that as well. Like, Yuito, how are you able to... How are you able to do the same thing? Honestly, every single person I say that to starts to stare at me with the biggest death glare ever before saying, Fuck. Because you deserve it, Kale. That's why they do it. They all do that because you deserve it. And you know you do, you filthy little pig. You know you deserve to be told to fuck off. It really is the time to be squabbling over New Hiroko or Sarah. Yeah, no, we kind of need to kill everyone. We need to go back. Well, not us, but we need to go back into that cube and, and kill them all. We have to kill every single one of them in, like, now. Okay? C can we go do that, Yuito? Can we go kill everyone inside the Togetsu cube? Why would someone at the center of Togetsu's plan reveal all this to us? Can we assume that you're planning to abandon them as well? Ruining their plan is something I've been working towards since the beginning. That's why I joined them, to get in the way. The... Huh? Eh? But, but you've been in cold storage for 2,000 years. Honestly, it's a good thing you don't watch things with me. You know Maine's girlfriend person I don't remember the name of? Kai Kiska. Same person. Okay, yeah, no, I don't, I don't get the connection. I don't see the connection. I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, I know Dorito. I know who Dorito is. And, uh, let me just say, Dorio, Ghislaine, not so much Ghislaine Maxwell, because she isn't quite the same, like, physique, but I will say, we need more characters with that sort of body type. We need more jacked women in anime. <laughs> we absolutely need more jacked women in anime. Like, her... And then also, oh, I do know another great example. I know another great example. Noi from Doro Hetero. Her as well. We, we need more of that. C can we have more of that, please? Can we please have more of that? Hey, did you know you can now play Mario Kart Mini Golf on Discord with people in the channel? Hold on one second. There we go. Sorry about that. I had to shut that thing up. It's, like I said, I have a reminder that comes on pretty much every day at this time, and I had to shut it up. I'm sorry about that. I want Noi to smack it. <laughs> you know, while she could do that, partner, you you and me, we both know she would be too much of a dork to do that. We both know she would be too much of a dork to do something like that. Mario Kart Mini Golf on Discord with people in the channel. That sounds awful. That sounds like a great way to get two people to, to get a bunch of people to try and kill each other, Bards, and I'm just gonna let you know that right now. That sounds like a great way to get a bunch of people to try and murder each other. So, uh, can, can, can we don't? Can we not? Can we not do that? I think that would be a great idea, is if we didn't do that, you know? Anyways, what are we seeing here? How are we supposed to believe you? Again, you don't have to. If you got a problem with me, I'll walk. But whatever happens, I'm not going to sit back and let them get away with erasing this history. I left my family on the moon. I won't let them take her. Who, Kagura? Who are you talking about, Kagura? It's been a long time since I've seen him like this, so please, trust him. But yeah, a friend of mine watches anime with me because I'm a good person who forces them to do that. And every time something pops into my head, I just ruin the scene. Yeah, no, I'm kind of wondering if... I'm kind of wondering now, Dusk. Especially considering that, again, whoever she is... Whoever she is on the moon, he left him... He left her behind 2,000 years ago. So that means they probably haven't seen each other in over 2,000 years as well. Which means that it, should they ever meet each other again, that is going to be a very weird reunion. Let's just get that out of the way. That's going to be a strange reunion. It's like the plot for Tales of Arise. 
I have never played a single Tales game, so I have no idea what that means, I'm afraid. But I'll take your word for it, Kale. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's good or bad, Kale. I'm just saying I've never played a Tales game. I've never played a single Tales game. So I have no context for this. Tsugumi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's listen to Best Girl, everybody. Just listen to Best Girl. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, if Sugumi trusts him, then I trust him too. That works for me, I guess. First, I'll kill him if he betrays us. <laughs> Damn, Kathane! Just out with it right at the beginning! <laughs> I love it. Like, of course, I'll kill him if he betrays us, but... <laughs> That's amazing! Bravo, Kasane! Bravo! You're dense. You're dense as a brick, but at the very least, you're smart enough to understand that if somebody screws you over, we're stopping to get to his plan. That's all we can do, but it's too much for us to handle alone. We need someone who can move nations. Are we gonna have to go get Brain Eater to join? No, Gamma. We're probably gonna go ask Brain Eater. Even so, we have to. That doesn't mean I forgive them for the things they're doing, though. Even if they know what Togetsu is trying to do, they might realize their terrible actions are all in vain. What if we ask... Yeah, we're gonna see what happens with that. I mean, that gives us the opportunity to see what... Watch it turn out Brain Eater knows about what Togetsu is trying here. That would be absolutely fucking wild. Yeah, he's going way quicker than I did because Ganabelt 1 shot me with indignation this one time and I went on a leveling montage. I'm gonna need a montage! Montage! God damn it, Kale. Better than nothing. Indeed. So, should we split up and give it a shot? I mean, it's our only, it's our only shot. That's our only chance right now. Wait, you want... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're going to Seron. He's going to New Himika. That makes sense, actually. I was going to say. Wait, is Kasane... I was going to say, is Kasane going to New Himiko? They're going to kill her before she even gets to the door. That's a terrible idea. But no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hanabi Ichijo, Yuito's childhood friend. And... I kind of feel bad for her. Ganabelle's mystic art was a pain in the ass. Oh, boy. I don't know. Again, I have no context for this, but now you're making me wonder. I might actually have to look into seeing if I want to actually play one of the Tales games. Play Tales over... I mean, even I, I don't know if I want to play all of the Tales games, but I might look into giving at least Tales of Arise a shot now. Because I don't know what any of this means, but it sounds like it could be interesting at the very least. Yeah, we've been getting so, fucked around this whole time. Now we're about to make them find out. What we need to do is focus on stopping to get to. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's see then. We trust you for now, Kagero. We trust you for now. But of course, if you try and. I'm gonna say it again. Fuck around and find out. If I did these last 2,000 years, it would be for nothing. I'm still wondering. I'm still wondering how long... Just how long has Tagetsu been trying to create the red strings to go and do all of this? Let's see. We got brain messages. Who are they from? One is Sugumi. I want to talk to you about something, Kasane. If you want, I want to talk alone, so come to Musubi's if you feel like it. Only if you feel like it, though. Of course I want to talk to Best Girl. She's adorable. She's adorable, and I love her. I love, I love Tsugumi. She's, she's so cute. Did you want to talk to me about something? Like, I, I need to see. Actually, let me, I want to go see. Who is doing her voice? I need to see this real quickly. Who is your voice? Marika Kono. What else has she done? Marika Kono has been in... Let's see. Marika Kono has been in... Yeah, I know. Absolutely, Dusk. You just want to give her a hug. She's so cute. She's so, so, she's just so sweet. 
What have you been in? What have you been in? So we pull that up. We pull this up. What have you been in? Log Horizon 2. I haven't watched that. Minor role in Food Wars. Minor role in Is the Order a Rabbit. I never watched that either. Minor role in Prison School. Your Lion April minor role. She was in Flip Flappers. I have not seen Flip Flappers. She was in Psyche K for one episode, apparently. Oh my god, she was in that trash? She was in, in a, she was in, in another world with my smartphone? Ugh, I mean, I guess it pays the bills, but damn. Ugh, poor, poor thing. Uma, she was in Uma Musume? She was in Uma Musume of all things? Holy shit. Oh no, she's a cute one too. She's a cute one in us. She's a cute one too. Silent Suzuka. She's the look. She's the cute redhead horse. Okay. This that's actually really nice. So she was in. So that's that's actually the first thing I've seen her in that I recognize, is that she was in Uma Musume. She has been in. She was in the Azerlane anime, which is not very good. She was in By the Grace of the Gods. I have never watched that. She was in Seton Academy? Who was Shiho? Who was Shiho from Seton Academy? Because I don't remember a lot of the characters from this. A deer. Okay. Oh, an Impala. She's an Impala. Oh, that's adorable. That's adorable. That is an adorable character design. I Okay. I, I I love I love Setin Academy in general, and I don't remember this character in particular. But I just immediately when I saw that she was in Setin Academy, I was like, I knew whatever it was gonna be was gonna be a good design. But holy shit, Mary Skelter! I'm not familiar with Mary Skelter, but okay, I might have to give that a look too as well. Let's see what else she's been in. So Setin Academy is the last thing we looked at. She's in Eden, which I watched. Eden is very 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 cool, by the way. It's such, an, it's such such a neat concept. If you haven't seen it, you should watch Eden. It's super neat. She's in Beast Tamer, which I think somebody linked earlier. Was that? No, that was not that. Whatever. I don't know. Maybe somebody linked that earlier. I don't know why I thought they did, but whatever. It's fine. Don't hurt me, my healer. Which I saw that, and for some reason, it's not the same thing. But that triggered a fight or flight reaction when I saw the name "Don't Hurt Me, My Healer." Because at first I thought it was redo of healer, and redo of healer is evil. Redo of healer is evil, and I want to. Ah, uh, that hate redo of healer. I absolutely hate redo of healer. So so much even though redo of healer does have one of the best torture sequences at least as a concept where he literally goes he breaks somebody's fingers he breaks somebody's fingers heals them and then proceeds to break them again repeatedly until the pain drives the person mad like, the entire setup for the plot of Redo of Healer is garbage, and I I want to burn it from the collect- I want to burn it from all of our collective memories, but that sequence, as a concept, is just brilliant. That is a brilliant concept for torture. Oh, yeah, 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 I know the exact scene you're talking about, Kale! The exact scene! But the other thing is, Tokyo Ghoul- at least has more than just that scene because at least tokyo ghoul was a somewhat decent plot it wasn't garbage it wasn't absolute trash so please stop comparing those two to each other won't you god the worst part is this the entire time i was talking about that scene i was doing exactly that dusk I was just cracking my fingers back and forth and back and forth and back and forth the entire time I was talking about that torture sequence. And it felt good. <laughs> it 
The other thing I remember from Tokyo Ghoul's version of that with the finger torture is that along with breaking the fingers like that, he also had to count backwards from some number. I forget. I think it was like count backwards from a thousand and he had to like skip every certain number or something like that. And every time he got it wrong, that's when one of his finger bones got broken. That's, that's, that's like vaguely what I remember from that whole, like from that whole sequence, which again, really helped to make the whole thing extra traumatic. <laughs> Don't hurt me, my healer is funny to have on the background, but there's only one joke about how the healer does more psych harm than good to the warrior she sticks with. That is always kind of a shame when, like, even if you have a good joke, if that's your one joke, that kind of does suck, partner. It's like, do you have anything else? Do, do, you, do you have anything else? Can you please? Like, th this joke is fine. This joke is not bad, but c can you please give me more? Can you at least make this? Like, if you're gonna have this joke, it needs to have more to it. I mean, Monzai comedy is great. Monzai comedy is good. And in particular, on the subject of comedy duos, Monzai being a branch of that, I love, I love, 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 love Gaki no Tsukai. I wonder, I'm like, how many of y'all have seen that here before? How many of y'all have seen Gaki no Tsukai? Because Gaki no Tsukai is amazing, and if you haven't seen it, I am about to expose you to this magic. Because this magic is absolutely amazing. I'm trying to find something in particular. Like, we're not going to watch the whole thing. But there is a particular... Oh, shit! Hey, Atlas! Thanks for the raid! <laughs> what were y'all up to? Hello, everybody! You can call me Furo. Due to incidents involving necromancy, my soul has been transferred to this armored frame, and streaming has become an outlet for me to keep my soul stable and avoid becoming uncontrollably violent. It's only kind of working so far. But give everyone here. Hey, Chad Thunderfuck, thanks for the follow. <laughs> and let me give. Let me just take care of this real quickly because. This is important as well. I mean, I need to see what you were doing, don't I? I want to know what you were doing, Atlas. And I just remember this doesn't actually do that. Fuck. But. Oh my god. Twitch! Twitch, did you sign me out again? Did you seriously sign me out again, Twitch? I swear to god, this is the third time you've done this. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you, Twitch. Let me do this because obviously Twitch, yes, Twitch is being an asshole again. There we go, Atlas. So tell me, Atlas, what were you up to? What were you up to before you raided into here, huh? What were y'all doing? Yeah, but yeah, no, Twitch is kind of being an asshole. More specifically, Twitch in OBS is being an asshole. It's being stupid. It's being stupid. I'll fix it later. I know how to fix it. It's not going to take too long. You just got to go here. No. Yeah, I got to go do a thing. But I forget how you do it. Like I said, I'll do it later. It'll be fine. It's just going to be a minor thing I actually have to fix. Because, it's like I said, it's got me signed out in OBS. So I had to go and open the browser window to get that working. Oh. Wait, why were your eyes red? Why were your eyes red there? She's so cute. She's so cute. I love her. She is the best girl in this game. She is absolutely the best girl in this game, and I want to give her a big hug. She's so sweet. Oh. Okay. What about my left knee? What about my left knee? There's a bruise. You might have hit it during a fight. Oh. Oh my God, she's so cute. <laughs> How are you doing, Alex? You... I told Dusk a couple of minutes ago that I was going to sleep in hopes of him saying, finally, the chaos has been vanquished in his edgy ways. <laughs> That's because he knew, Kale. He knew you actually didn't go to sleep. I gotta look at it when we get back to the highway. Thank you for noticing. I had a feeling you were subconsciously favoring your left leg when you were walking over here. 
I was worried, so I couldn't help but use my power. I'm sorry. Don't worry. Oh my god, she's. I'm sorry, she's just so cute. She's so goddamn cute, and I love it. I love Tsugumi, she's so sweet. I love this little dork so much. Why are you apologizing? Yeah, no, I like. I violated your privacy with. Oh. Like, like, the way she's like deflating and scrunching up is so cool. exactly dusk. I'm going to reach through this screen and give her a giant hug. I'm absolutely going to reach through this screen and give her a big hug, dusk. It's going to be it's it, it's going to happen. Did something happen when you were younger? Yes, I didn't realize back then that what I can see isn't something necessarily I should see. She is like, like something about her voice and her demeanor is triggering the same sort of reaction that I got from... It's funny I mentioned this because Azure Lane is a very coom game, but there's another character in Azure Lane that triggers the same sort of reaction from me. And let me see, which one is it again? It's, it's one of the destroyers because she's so cute. I think I know who it is. 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 Hatsuharu triggers the exact same reaction from me, particularly because she literally has one of her lines. She just faints. And it's so sweet. It's so cute. It's so precious. Like, oh. Also, it doesn't hurt that she has this outfit. This outfit, just again, is. I gotta show you this because this is adorable. This is adorable, and it's going to bother me until I show you what I'm talking about here. This outfit is incredibly cute, and I love it. I love this outfit. She's got a little snow bunny. She's giving us a little snow bunny. Look at it. It's so cute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I sound like <laughs> if I sound like the tiniest anime girl right now, but there's just something so cute about her just like holding the little snow bunny like that. I love it. I love the little snow bunny she's holding. But yeah, no, she is triggering, like, Sugumi is triggering that exact same sort of reaction out of me right now. <sighs> what did you see, Sugumi? When I told people what I saw, they would get uncomfortable and sometimes get scared of me. Okay. It's okay. It's okay, Sugumi. Yeah, I, I, head pat her indeed. But yeah, Tsugumi gives me the fim reaction of, I will hug you and decimate the people who dare to harm you. It's literally, I have literally only known her for five minutes, but if anything was to happen to her, I would kill everyone in this room. It is absolutely that reaction. I finally realized that I shouldn't be looking under... But looking underneath... Tsugumi. Tsugumi. Oh, no. Oh. You might have been right. You might have been right, Dusk. She might have been looking under people. Oh, no. She even said she was looking under people's clothes. Oh. I don't know. Are you saying you can see inside people's bodies, too? Oh, no. Oh, no. She did not, did she? She did not. Did she, like, did she happen to see, like, a vision of somebody that had cancer or something and told them you're going to die soon? Oh, that, that's awkward. That's awkward. Oh. But not only can you see injuries, you can detect internal diseases early as well. That means your power can save lives. There really aren't many that can do that. I think it's a wonderful power. Oh. Thanks, Kasane. Thanks, Kasane. It's because you're, you're yeah. Hasn't often been noted for its everyday uses. I mean, that's kind of a big mistake. That's a mistake on the part of the OSF. They should probably pay attention to that. Because like we just said, that is an extremely useful thing to be able to do. I don't talk about it if I do see something. 
Maybe you should be more open about what you can do then, Sugumi, because that might help. I'm just saying. It's a strange feeling being told I can look. It does take a weight off my shoulders, though. <laughs> <laughs> ah, burp. Gas. <laughs> well, that's good. Yes. You something you wanted, didn't you have something you wanted to discuss? Oh. Okay, fine, Sugumi. Hey, at least it gives us another chance to actually meet her later then. I can't help but be a little concerned. She's so sweet. She's so sweet. I love her. She's adorable. Are you saying? She, she is like, she is giving that exact sort of reaction we were talking about just now. The talk. Receive brain message. Make sure you take care of that bruise. Once a spot gets hit, it's easy to get hit there again. I worry because you're a little careless about enemy attacks. Yes, I know I am. I know I am, Sugumi. It'll be fine, though. Thanks for your concern, but I'm not careless. Dodging the least amount necessary just yields the best results. What about you, Tsugumi? You keep your distance from your enemies, but that doesn't mean you can let your guard down. You never know what kind of attack they could send your way, so be careful. Probably is dangerous. Oh, she's so sweet. She's so sweet. I love it. I want to apologize for what happened the other day. Excuse me for a moment, by the way. I think somebody... I think I need to go check on something. I'll be right back in a moment. Sorry about that. I'm back. Turns out it was nothing. It's all right. Thought somebody was at the door. It's okay, though. Let's see what this is all about then. So Gemma wants to talk to me about something. And then we're going to see what this is first. So what do you want to talk about? All right. I'm going to say around now. Say around now. Let's go see what Gemma wants to talk about because, well, first of all, I'm trying to remember if it's Gemma or... Something else that we've been meeting recently before. Gemma. It's fine, Genma. Just tell us what you're what you're here for. Don't apologize. Why? I'm the one who should say sorry. You don't have any reason to apologize to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, Genma, okay, for everybody who hasn't been here before, Genma is a very interesting because, so one of the big plot points of Scarlet Nexus, I'm just going to do a little, I'm not going to like dump the whole lore on you, but I am going to mention this because it's important. One of the big plot points of Scarlet Nexus is that individuals that have the kind of abilities that are needed to fight the others tend to be... They are, I should not tell me. They have, they are given drugs that slow down their aging, which means that a lot of characters in this, not just Kagero because he was in cold storage, are significantly older than their appearance lets on. 
Genma here being one of the oldest. And one of his big concerns, one of the things that he's really afraid of is that he's aging out, that he's gotten too old, that he is, he's gotten too old to keep fighting, that he's effectively going to be retired from the OSF. And as a result, they're going to stop, you know, they're going to, they're, they're going to unsuspend his aging. And one of the things I don't remember, if, I don't remember if they mentioned this, but I believe that when that happens, all of the aging that's been held off by the drugs comes in all at once. So not only is he going to get old, not, it's not, it's not just that he's going to get old. It's that he's going to get old like that. He's just going to like instantly get old. And that terrifies him. That absolutely terrifies him. でも、私もいろいろ経験してきたから少しは想像ができるようになったわ。死にたいと思うようなことが。ああ、いや、そうです。私が got turned into one of these brain-eating space monsters that we've been fighting and is and has been kept at a research facility that on one hand claims they're trying to cure her of her condition but on the other hand may also be involved with turning said brain-eating space monsters into a weapon and one of the things that she discovered is that because she's a you know there's that there's this drug that they've been giving her that despite her body being one of those brain-eating space monsters allows her to think clearly for brief periods of time however that drug is also made from human brains and that caused her to go into a really nasty depressive funk that was not a good moment for her it was not a good time for naomi Let's just put it that way. She said she didn't want to live anymore. I don't 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 want to live anymore. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that... It just does not sound like a good time no matter who you are. It just sounds like an unpleasant experience regardless of where you're coming from. So I can see why. I can kind of see why Naomi, but yeah, I can kind of see why Naomi was not happy about this and why she like, why she became a bit suicidal over it. That's, that realization that not only are you the monster that you've been trained to fight ever since you were, hey there, Sonny, how are you doing tonight? What's going on with you? Just say it again. I shouldn't have unloaded my feelings of self-pity on you. I'm old enough to know better. So I brought you something as a token of apology. Packed lunch? <laughs> I love the faces. I mentioned, this, I mentioned this before. I love the faces that some of the characters make in this. Where they're like... You know, like, especially Kasane, because Kasane usually just has this face of being absolutely done with everything. Like, she just has this deadpan face most of the time, and then she just perks up like, hmm? Hmm? Packed lunch? Ooh. Yeah, they're from all the recipes Naomi gave you. Aww, that's nice. I don't know if you're hungry or not, but maybe you should be, you'd be willing to give them a taste. So I gave an Atlas raid, but I'm working, so I didn't know. Ah, that's fine. That's fine, Sonny. It's nice to know that you're here, though. It's nice to know that you're here. What was Atlas doing, by the way? I don't think he told me. I don't think he told me what he was doing. So what was Atlas doing? Oh, wait, that's right. I do know what Atlas was doing. Fuck. Because we were talking about it the other day on Discord. Atlas was playing in San Aquarium, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it was. He was do so because he was going to be busy tomorrow. He moved Drunk Friday up to today instead of doing it at its usual time, on its usual date. So he was playing. So he did in San Aquarium for Drunk Friday today. I don't know if anybody else was there with him, but now that you mentioned, I know what he was doing. I know exactly what he was doing. I was like, I was asking what he was doing. I was like, wait, no, I saw what he was doing. He said what he was doing. 
So for those of you who don't know, Insane Aquarium is this old, 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 like from the before times of Macromedia Shockwave. Before even, before it was even called, before it was even Adobe. From the times of Macromedia Shockwave game where you manage, where you have to manage an aquarium. And it's got like a bunch of different kinds of fish. I don't remember what half of them are. But I remember that game being one that you would see all the time. It was pushed around by this company called PopCap Games. And there was some kind of early version of monetization involved with it as well. I don't remember half the damn game. Peggle? Oh, did they also do... Did they also make Peggle? <laughs> did they also do Peggle? Because... Now that, now that we're on this, now that I'm thinking about this, I, like, I remember them from Insane Aquarium, and then you have Peggle, which is another game that was like really big from the before, from those days, from those days as well. Fuck, I'm old. <laughs> God, I'm old as hell. Uh, what else did they do? They did a bunch of shit. They did a bunch of shit. Let's go see what all they did, because they did a bunch of shit. They made... Oh God, they're part of EA now. Oh God, they're, they're an EA subsidiary. Ugh. Ever since 2011. Damn. Oh, shit. They're the people that made Plants vs. Zombies? What the fuck? Okay, that's... Okay. Bejeweled, Plants vs. Zombies, Insane Aquarium. Oh, my God. They've made a lot of stuff over the years. Damn. <laughs> like, some of it I knew about, but some of it is like, huh? Okay, then. There's stuff... This is stir-fried mackerel and green peppers. The only reason it didn't get shuttered like Westfoot is because Plants vs. Zombie and Bejewels was so easy to make and made money. Yeah. Also, let's just be blunt, Sunny Day. As much as people look back fondly on Westwood, the RTS genre is... It wasn't killed by MOBAs or anything like that. The reason the RTS genre kind of died is that nothing has really innovated nothing has really innovated on the rts genre since starcraft 2 like nothing has really innovated on the genre since starcraft 2 so anything that westwood might have made as an rts would have been really stale it would have been incredibly stale and just a rehash of the same things that they've been they had been doing for years up to that point. It's unfortunate that EA did that, and it's kind of scummy that they did, but at the same time, at least that way they got to go while people still were, had good memories of Westwood. Like, at least they got to go back when people still had good memories of Westwood and not after mid-2000s, early 2010s EA turned them into a monster that barely resembled the thing they used to be in all barely resembled the thing they used to be because mid-2000s EA like mid-2000s early 2010s EA was the peak of evil EA like people like people give EA a stick now but EA back in the late 2000s early 2010s that was really peak evil EA that was the days of on disc locked you know, disc locked content on a sixty dollar retail game that was sold as physical media. That was the days of shit like Mass Effect Three, which I mean, we all remember how much of a disaster, how much of a mess, under disaster, how much of a mess Mass Effect Three was. Those were the days. Although on the upside, those were also the days of Battlefield Four. And Battlefield 4 is a game that we will never get again. And it makes me so sad. And it's entirely because Battlefield 4's plot involves China. We're never going to get another game like that because the Chinese will throw a fit. The shareholder, the Chinese will throw a fit. The Chinese government will throw a fit, which means the shareholders will throw a fit, which means EA will kill anything involving anything of the sort that involves China before it even gets a chance to get pitched. And it is so, so sad.
God. Wow. You that is that is interesting. That is interesting to hear somebody that loved Mass <laughs> Effect 3. That is very interesting to hear somebody that loved Mass Effect 3 because I'm pretty sure like everyone I've ever talked to about Mass Effect 3 has a very negative impression of what it did to the series. I'm still learning, so I burned some. Okay. It does remind me of my sister's cooking Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Oh, she's smiling. She's smiling. She's smiling. Would you look at that? She's actually smiling. So good. It reminds you, it's still an accomplishment. It's very really good and a little familiar. It must have taken you a while to make all of this. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. Cooking helps calm me. It's perfect for self-reflection. He is absolutely right about that, by the way. He is absolutely right about that. Oh no, I didn't get to have a fourth or fifth game because my favorite game got three different endings and I'm a whining. Oh my god. It's not even that sunny day. It's not even that. It's that the three endings had very little, you know, they, 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 they all felt hollow. You know, three different endings that all felt hollow. I would trade one good ending for three hollow endings. And like, oh, even the fourth one isn't that good either. You know, the fourth ending, none of them are that great. And they improved on them later on down the line, but they just felt hollow. Especially compared to the setup that had been done, and especially the first game. The Mass Effect, the Mass Effect 1 is the best game in the series. Let's get that out of the way right now. Mass Effect 1 is the best game in the series. I will not hear any slander against Mass I will not hear any claims to the contrary. Mass Effect 2 is still fine, but it's not quite as good as Mass Effect 1. And then Mass Effect 3 is okay, but the, the, the way that they closed off the plot is sloppy and feels hollow. Although I used to think it was a waste of time. I thought about what you... Which part? I think I said a lot about the last time we talked. Last time we talked. About how I wanted to roll over and die, and how that was selfish. That really hit me hard. I haven't even touched Andromeda. I haven't even touched Andromeda. So I have like no dog in that fight, Sunny Day. So I'm not even gonna touch that one. It made me realize that wasting whatever life I have left was disrespecting their memory. I might be too serious, but I plan to live the rest of my life to its fullest. That's nice to hear, Genma. That's very nice to hear. That's good on you. Good on you, Genma. First thing is to get back to eating healthy with Naomi's recipes. I also want to reevaluate the way I spend my weekends. Maybe find a new hobby besides cooking. Yeah, that's probably a good idea again. My evening cooking is a good hobby, but it, all, it, it never hurts to have more. It never hurts to have more things to dedicate your time to. As long as they're not consuming, you know, as long as you're not like out of control with them. You know, it, 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 it never hurts to have something to dedicate your time to something something that you can carve out and say this is my time this is this is for me that is a very good thing to have looks so maybe he started to feel more positive about his life that is nice to know that is nice to see though that he's actually got He's actually gotten him like he's he's actually feeling better about himself. That's good to see. Good on you, Genma. Good on you. Yeah, no, I don't remember any of it. I don't remember any of it, Kyoka. Did you know me then? Yeah, like do, what 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 are you what are you gonna like give us some? No, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you anything. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting. Thanks for. Helping us get, I mean, even if that wasn't your plan, I guess thank you for helping us get those memories back, Kyoka. That was nice. If you want to learn things, you must act. I spy, I read memories, and I take and take records. Phase eight, they speak of the hidden past. Let's save here, and then let's go and see who's on that we can say hello to, shall we? Because, I mean, yeah, no, we started a bit late, but hey. 
This is a game. And this, and this is a game that definitely. I'm glad that more people got to see because it's a very interesting game. But it's it's a bit late here, unfortunately. And today's been a bit. I've been kind of run around today. I've been getting run around today. So let's go see who we can say hi. I know exactly who we can say hi to. I know exactly who we're gonna go say hi to, actually. Because I haven't actually I haven't actually seen them around in a while. And actually no, who are we? Actually, I know exactly I do know who we're gonna go say hi to. Because I recently I recently saw something from this person that absolutely floored me. <laughs> <laughs> y'all are probably familiar with her on some extent as well. But if y'all know Hina, y'all know Hina, you know that she is, let's just say, Hina is a character. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Hina is a character. As for, as for the raid message. Ooh, what should the raid message be? That's the real question. Mm, what should the rain message be? What should the rain message be? God, this is hard actually. Like trying to think of a good rain message is always kind of a pain. God, this is this is difficult actually. Oh, but I do actually know. I do know the rain message. I do know the rain message. I do know the rain message. I do know the raid message. Who am I kidding? I know the exact raid message. There we go. That's the raid message. <laughs> and with that, I say to everyone here, good night. <laughs>